Um, it's my pleasure now to, intro to introduce uh, John Hilton. John Hilton is the senior editor for um, publishing operations in Cochrane, and he's going to talk to us about the uh, editorial policies in the Cochrane Library. Thank you, John. Thank you, Carla, and uh, welcome, Judith, and hello, everybody. Um, I'd like to talk today about uh, some changes to editorial and publishing policies and uh, cover three different areas today. One is uh, a new feature on the Cochrane Library called an editorial note, uh, which I will talk about. And then I also want to cover, um, we've created a new home for editorial policies on the Cochrane Library. And lastly, I want to talk a little bit about um, future plans uh, in the areas of policy work. So um, first of all, I'll start with some thank yous because you know all good projects involve um, collaboration. Um, in in our departments, Stephanie, Ruth, Justin, and Rachel, uh, especially Justin, who's been working really hard, um, and him and um, Stephanie uh, joined the organisation last year, and I've yet to meet them physically, so I'm looking forward to that. And the editorial note feature uh, was um, it's quite a simple looking feature, but took a collaborative effort between teams at uh, Cochrane Library product team and Archie team, Wiley and Highwire colleagues as well. So thank you to them. So the editorial note, um, in its simplest form, it's a short text statement that can be added to the top of a Cochrane review or a protocol. And as you can see in this example, it appears just beneath the title, but above the abstract uh, highlighted there. Um, and these have three different uses. Um, we may expand that over time, but initially we're just limiting it to three particular uses. So the first one, as in that example I just showed you, is where we want to add a statement by the editor in chief about the context or the status of a review. Um, in this particular example, we wanted to make it clear uh, this review was a controversial review, and we wanted to make it um, clear that what our position was on it and a note's a good way to do that um, and it's we can change it as we wish. Second use of a, uh, an editorial note is to publish an expression of concern and an expression of concern is uh, an increasingly popular mechanism in publishing uh, when you want to highlight concerns as the name suggests about an article often when things are inconclusive or an investigation is in progress. So you're not at the stage where it can be retracted uh, or withdrawn, or indeed you may not want to, but nonetheless, you want to make readers aware that they're, they, they should, um, and then text will explain why, they should approach it with some caution, and make their own judgments. So this is part of the uh, one of the tools for managing problematic studies in reviews, which Stephanie is going to talk about later in this webinar. Um, and these will be managed by our department um, and posted uh, in agreement with uh, an editor in our department. So the third use is more for more broad use by um, review groups or editorial teams. And that is where we want to direct uh, Cochrane Library readers to a more recent review or protocol. So normally when a, re you know, a review was updated, um, readers are automatically directed to the new version. But there are situations where uh, the review is addressed in a, the review question is addressed in a new review separate to the original with a different scope or methodology or when reviews are merged or split. And secondly, we have occasions where a new protocol is needed uh, with a different author team perhaps. So you can put a note on the, the, the published review, which is still valid as a review, but to say that there's a new protocol for a future review. In fact, this can be used in any other case where a review has not been updated or won't be updated, but it has been superseded by another review. And these can be published by Cochrane editorial teams, uh, but we ask that teams let us know when they do so that we can keep track of them. So how it works, um, it's all done in Revman and published as an amendment using that's Revman 5 or Revman Web, using standard processes, using the Publish Notes section, in fact. There's guidance on this in the EPPR and in the Revman Knowledge Base, if it's not already. 
if it's it'll be coming soon. Um, it displays on both the web HTML and PDF versions of the review, and it's also published alongside the plain language summary on Cochrane.org. And as I said, please let us know if you are interested in publishing editorial note or, or have published one already. Um, what's next? We uh, Currently, they don't permit hyperlinks, which is a bit of a limitation if you're trying to direct readers to an alternative review. Um, so that's in development and will be coming in soon. And additionally, we want to be able to translate them like other content on the Cochrane Library, and that's coming. And in future, we'll be looking at integrating tracking of this in Editorial Manager, our new editorial management system, and potential delivery to PubMed where appropriate. So that's the editorial note. I want to talk now a little bit about the some changes we've made to introduce a new policies page on the Cochrane Library. So hopefully you're all familiar with the Cochrane Editorial and Publishing Policy Resource, EPPR. Um, this was uh, created several years ago as a repository for our uh, increasing number of policies and edit an accompanying implementation guidance and other advice. It's grown over the years um, and it's reached a point where it's become quite large and it's trying to serve multiple audiences. So we've taken uh, a decision to move some of the, the public facing policy information onto the Cochrane Library itself. And why have we done that? Well, as I said, it's the EPPR is currently serving multiple audiences and it's not ideal for any of those audiences. And we've had feedback that policies are just hard to find um, from, from various people. Uh, it's also grown large. You know, we've been, when it started, it was, we didn't have that many policies and that much guidance, but we, we keep doing them. So it's become harder to manage. And we do feel that we need to provide information directed specifically at current prospective authors and Cochrane Library users and what I call observers, those who are, you know, want to know what we're doing and understand us. And lastly, it's just more normal for journal policies information to be hosted on the journal website. So we've um, created this page and the URL is there and that's what it looks like. So uh, this page collects together, um, as you can see at the top, um, the key policies of interest to authors and Cochrane Library users. Um, it's a long page, but it's searchable, and it's it's listed under the About menu at the top there. Um, because it's on the Cochrane Library, it'll also be translated into Spanish. So this entire page, and it's, it's quite long, and that's coming soon. The translation team will be working on it. I think it's quite, a, quite unusual to have bilingual editorial policy information, but I'm quite pleased we can do that. Um, this, this, this is all information taken from our existing policies and just collated uh, in a new form. Um, but there are a couple of new things on here. One is the, um, the brand new policy launched today that Stephanie's talking about on managing potentially problematic studies. And secondly, we've got some expanded information on handling allegations of misconduct within Cochrane Reviews. It's quite straightforward information um, at the moment, and it is basically summarizing Cochrane's approach, which is broadly in line with the Committee on Publication Ethics, COPE. So what's next? Um, we need to make ongoing improvements to this um, policy page. Um, in the process of building it, it's like, you know, you're going sorting out a cupboard or something. You, When you put everything together, you realize that some things need a bit of improvement, some things need mending. Um, some things could be better worded, um, but also we need to uh, develop it as we face new changes with, with our editorial management system and any other changes coming up. We need to make sure that this policy page reflects those changes uh, in a more dynamic way. So there'll be ongoing improvements and we do welcome feedback on it. So what about the EPPR? Well, there'll be no immediate changes to that. So for some period of time, they will be policies will be somewhat duplicated uh, in the two places. There is plenty of policy information that's only on the EPPR, EPPR still, that those kinds of policies that relate only to internal 
um, processes. And the long-term plan for the EPPR is to make it fully into an editorial guidance resource, such that uh, it's really focused on editors and editorial teams. Uh, in terms of broader policy work, we know that we need to look again at our withdrawal policy uh, to bring it more in line with standard publishing practices. Um, and that's coming soon. And we also want to be looking at the area of updating, both in terms of what we do on the Cochrane Library and our policies around it. The COPE journal audit uh, is something that um, COPE offers its members and CDSR is a member. Uh, it enables you to it's a, quite a long checklist of items you can make to check whether your journal is displaying and the right kind of information and has the right kind of processes and practices um, in accordance with COPE's core practices. We ran that audit initially um, 2019, but um, we did pretty well, um, but there were areas we could improve. Work on that was somewhat put on hold um, due to focusing on the pandemic response, but we're picking that up again. And this project has, has helped us tick off a few more boxes and we'll we'll share the outcome of that when we go through it. Um, so just to say thank you for listening and these are the people uh, in the team who you can get in touch with with feedback or questions. Thank you very much. Thank you John very much.